Most of this information comes from publication 527 Residential Rental Property, including rental of vacation homes, tax year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, but just an outline, a scaffolding, other forms and schedules flowing into each of these line items. One of those, the Schedule E for rental property, it being an income statement in and of itself with rental income minus rental expenses, the net rental income in essence flowing into line one income of our income tax formula. Let's start off by thinking about what's new with the rental properties. Uh, standard mileage rate for 2022, the standard mileage rate for the cost of operating your car, van, pickup, or panel truck between January 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2022 is 58.5 cents per mile. So we'll talk more about uh, the deductions that might be allowable for the rental property. And when we talk about the auto miles, we have that idea of taking the actual deductions or the mileage method. And then of course we would expect the mileage method amounts to be changed each year so they can keep in pace with inflation. So the business standard mileage rate for July 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022 is 62.5 cents per mile. So they, they actually kind of broke it up halfway through the year, possibly because of the inflation uh, during the year. So they had to kind of break it out, which makes it a little bit more confusing to calculate, but not too bad. So excess business loss limitation. If you report a loss on line 26, 32, 37, or 39 of your Schedule E Form 1040, you may be subject to a business loss limitation. So note, when you have rental income, one of the things, or any kind of income in general, but rental income here is our focus. Anytime you have a loss, the IRS is skeptical of losses because the IRS wants to be your silent partner taking a piece of your income, but not needing to take on the risk of losses. Because if you have the loss, you might be able to take that against other income. So whenever we think about rental property, we are, we're always thinking about that situation. What happens when there's a loss? Are there limitations to uh, the loss, which we'll get into in future presentations. So the disallowed loss resulting from the limitation will not be reflected on line 26, 32, 37, or 39 of your Schedule E. Instead, use form 461 to determine the amount of your excess business loss, which will be included as income on Schedule 1, form 1040, line 8P. Any disallowed loss resulting from this limitation will be treated as a net operating loss that must be carried forward and deducted in a subsequent year. So you can see Form 461 and its instructions for details on the excess business loss limitations. Then we've got the Section 179 deduction dollar limits. For tax years beginning 2022, the maximum Section 179 expense deduction is $1,080,000. This limit is reduced by the amount by which cost of Section 179 property placed in service during the tax year exceeds $2,700,000. So 179 has to do with depreciable property and whether or not you might be able to get more depreciation in the first year that you put the property in place. So the general idea with the depreciation is that you have to put it on the books as an asset, not expensing it in the year of purchase, but allocating the cost over its useful life. And then they have these uh, special depreciation and 179 depreciations, which may allow you to take more depreciation in uh, the first year. So we might dive into that more in future presentations. Form 7205, Energy Efficient Commercial Building Deduction. This new form and its separate instructions are used to claim the IRC 179D deduction for qualifying energy efficient commercial building expenses. Qualified paid sick leave and qualified paid family leave payroll tax credit. So the amount of any payroll tax credit taken by an employer for the qualified paid sick leave and qualified paid family leave under the Family's First Coronavirus uh, Response Act, uh, that's the FFC, 
ARA, and the American Rescue Act, the ARP, the ARP, must be included in income. So that's kind of more of a special situation that obviously came about due to the response with the coronavirus pandemic. So you can see form 941, it has to do with payroll 941 being the, the payroll form. Uh, so if you have employees, you'll be dealing with W-2s, W-3s, 941s, and so on. And then the question is, uh, does this qualified paid sick leave apply to you in that instance? So again, C form 941, <clears throat> lines 11B, 11D, 13C, and 13E, and form 944, uh, lines 8B, 8D, 10D, and 10F. You must include the full amount, both the refundable and non-refundable portions of the credit for qualified sick and family leave wages and gross income on uh, line three or four as applicable for the tax year that includes the last day of any calendar quarter with respect to which a credit is allowed. Note, a credit is available only if the leave was taken after March 31st, 2020 and before October 1st, 2021 and only after the qualified leave wages minimum wage and tips were paid, which might, under certain circumstances, not occur until a quarter after September 30th, 2021, including quarters during 2022. Accordingly, all lines related to qualified sick and family leave wages remain on the employment tax returns for 2022.